All right, why don't we um, why don't we get going? So overall, uh, you know, unfortunately, and, and Coach uh, said this yesterday to the team and said it again this morning. Um, you know, Vegas played the game that we wanted to play. You know, under under those conditions, you know, in terms of uh, slowing the game down, be able to sort of win the game on the ground. You know, chew up a lot of clock and just not make mistakes. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they just did a better job than we did at that yesterday. Um, going in the bye week, you know, first of all, we have the trading deadline tomorrow. Um, although there's, you know, we're not necessarily anticipating a lot of activity, um, but we do have a chance over the course of the next, you know, week or 10 days to get healthy. Uh, we got a, a, a few players that we hope to get back, you know, going into the second half of the year, you know, a few starters on offense. That's as good as any, any uh, move we can make at the trade deadline. So hopefully we, we take this time to sort of get healthy and uh, get our full team back out there and uh, see what we can do for the final eight games. Yeah, going into the bye week, you always would prefer to go in with a win, uh, feel a little bit better about yourself uh, as you're going through all those meetings. But I, I thought we made huge strides uh, that bye week coming off that Raiders game. I think after eight games, we had a very large sample size to make some decisions and, and pull it apart and look at us schematically, look at us from a personnel standpoint and ask some hard questions. What, what can we do better? And that's where I think the coaches were outstanding in grabbing some real tangible things that, that we knew could improve our chances. So again, coming off that, that Raiders game, not fun, uh, really disappointed in the loss, but we learned a lot about ourselves coming out of it. You know, every week we have our upcoming opponent and we really drill down to the ins and outs of their schematic tendencies, where they're strong, where they're a little bit weaker from a personnel standpoint. And during the bye week, we do the same thing except our opponent is ourselves. So it gives you a, just a natural time to kind of press pause. And with our bye week occurring in the middle of the year, it was really the, the perfect timing where we could look at the areas that we were really strong, look at the areas that we were not as strong, that was productive from, from that standpoint. In terms of the team, you know, coming into the bye at five and three, um, pleased with some of the progress that we've made, but by no means satisfied. Just think that there um, is a lot that we can continue to improve, but certainly optimistic, you know, based on what we've seen over the first eight weeks of the season. I think the draft class as a whole has, has done a nice job this season. We've had our share of um, bad luck with injuries, whether it's with Grant or Jacob missing uh, a chunk of time, but all the guys, when they've been on the field, they've, they've, they've been good contributors. It's nice to see Jordan Elliott work in the rotation. It's been good to see uh, Harrison Bryant uh, have some really productive snaps at the F tight end. Um, it's been great to see Donovan People Jones uh, with his contributions, um, you know, on offense in some really critical moments for us you know, as well as on special teams as a, as a punt returner. And then Nick Harris, he it's unfortunate he hasn't had a chance to see the field in regular season opportunities, but we're really excited about um, his future here as well. Um, and then lastly, you know, Jed, Jed uh, probably had the toughest responsibility transitioning into the NFL, going from right tackle to left tackle, abbreviated off season uh, at an NFL position. That's, that's usually pretty challenging for, for rookies to adjust. Uh, and he's done a, a really nice job with the transition. Quite honestly, like his, his pass protection this year has been that of a veteran performer. Um, that's not to say that there aren't areas where he can improve, specifically in the run game with his consistency there. But we're really pleased with what we've seen from him so far as he's produced on Sundays and, and think that he continues to have a bright future. I, I think our, our free agents have... Uh produce either at or above our expectations. I think we, we couldn't be more pleased with them, I think as a group, you know, across the board. And then ultimately, I think our coaches have done a really nice job of, of blending those players in and getting them accustomed to the scheme. Uh, you know, we were talking about the trading deadline. One of the things that we felt strongly about, especially with installing a new scheme in training camp without spring football or anything else, was that we had a chance to really grow in the second half of the season as players got more comfortable in our scheme. Um, and we knew that early in the season, it could be a little bumpy. So to give those players a chance, you know, to continue to grow in the scheme, continue to get more comfortable, you know, we felt like, uh, you know, even if they weren't performing uh, above our expectations, 
you know, by the trading deadline, we felt like they had a chance to continue to grow into that, you know, as the season went on. The trading deadline is an interesting time. And as you know, I spent a lot of years in baseball, right? And there's a big trading deadline in baseball too in the middle of the season. And usually there's a lot more activity than in baseball than there is in the NFL at that trading deadline. And, and at first it was unusual to me, you know, think th this is a big opportunity to make some moves, improve the team, et cetera. Uh, but I think there are some legitimate reasons why the NFL isn't quite as transactional. Uh, one is just scheme. You know, it, it's a lot it's a lot more difficult to just plug and play a player in the NFL than in Major League Baseball. If you're a left fielder in Major League Baseball and you switch teams, there's not a whole lot that changes. I mean, you, you can be up to speed and be ready to play that night. You know, you get the signs from the third base coach. You're, you're, you're good to go. Uh, football is very, very different. Um, and, uh, you know, it takes a while for someone to actually learn the scheme, learn all the calls, but really understand the scheme. It's not just knowing where to line up. It's, it's being able to do it to a point where it's instinctual, you know, for you. Add in this year, the quarantine, you know, that, that comes with the COVID protocols. And, you know, you're talking about weeks, really, before the player is really up to speed and sort of ready to go for you. So put all that together with the fact that we actually liked our team quite a bit. We had some guys coming back from injury. Uh, we wanted them to have a chance to play. And again, I think this whole year has been such a uh, an exercise in team building uh, that we felt it had to be a really obvious upgrade, um, you know, for us to want to pursue anything because uh, we felt really strongly not just about the players we had, but about the team that we had created. You know, these are people, their bonds, their relationships, and and those relationships, I think, have been, uh, you know, built really strongly this year under these circumstances. And, you know, we didn't want to do anything to upset that. One, two, three, two. Now, a little bit good, a little bit good. Yeah, coming off the bye week, it was it was really good because the time it fell, you know, right in the middle of the year, had a chance. We had a good sample size of games to look at with eight games in, and we just tweaked a couple things. And really coming out of that, you know, we decided as a defense staff who we really want to be moving forward for the rest of the year. And you know, we showed players where we can get better, where we need to improve, and they bought into it. And uh, you know, we came out and had some. Early success after that. Let's ride, boys. Greatness on three. One, two, three. Man, the weather for the Texas game was like a, a summer. It was just terrible. There it comes. Right on time. Right on time. Lake Gary, I see you hitting, boy. It was like a Forrest Gump set. It was. It felt like it was coming from the ground, like it, like how you were getting hit, like with pieces of ice and sleet and snow. It's like, where did this come from? Now the flag might not be there after the game. It's coming from the side, it's coming from the top, and it's bouncing off the ground, it's hitting you. And it's just like, man, you can't ask for a better like story to be told. You get you get to play in this and you're like you get to talk to your family. You know, eventually, you know, when I have kids, I'm like, dang, you actually played through that? I'm like, and I had a hell of a good time doing it too. And you want to be able to, to look back and say you, you won those types of games. Oh, me! Oh, me, how'd you know? <laughs> My man said, give me a shot, go for it, even start it. <laughs> and the referee has just notified both sidelines to go into the locker rooms. Come on, as we have severe weather that has blown right into First Energy Stadium. Yeah, that Texans game was something I've really never been a part of from a standpoint of the wind. Uh, so we knew it was going to be a challenge. We knew we were going to have to find a way to move the ball and score some points uh, because it maybe wasn't going to be through the air in that game. We are back at First Energy Stadium. As I look to the skies here, it is much, much quieter here at the stadium. The winds still are going to be a factor here today, but here we go from First Energy, the Browns and the Texans. How's Garrett? What you doing on this bench, son? Come on, hang out. The beast himself. I'm Jay McGillan. Jay McGillan. <laughs> Come on, you're going to be mighty. <laughs> 
getting Nick back off of injury, you know, was huge. He gave us some really, really valuable uh, reps and runs in there early. Gosh, it's great to see number 24. He is a sight for yeah. sore eyes. He's back. Uh, what Kareem and uh, Nick bring to the, to the team is consistency. Uh, consistency in the way they run. I mean, in, in the games, bro, the impact they be having on them when they're moving them chains is huge. I mean, the defense love it. Keep back him. Keep back him. Keep going. <laughs> Boy, it's, it's huge, and those guys breaking them runs like that, you're going to see a lot of excitement out of me. A lot. <laughs> a lot of excitement out of me, man. Snap back, ball down, Parky into it. It's low. He drives that ball up, and it is good from 41. Make some noise, dog pal. Make some noise, dog pal. Video intros. Weak me. Weak as me. I don't know why they don't use yours. They know my energy. My be loud. My be loud. Look at that. Why? That's how you do it. The muffin on the side. The muffin. The muffin. The muffin. The muffin. The cushion. The cushion. You know the muffin man. 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 Fuck off. Good, baby. Our mindset as a defense line is to take over every week. Um, that's the ultimate goal in the run game. We always talk about earning the right to rush the passer. It starts with the run game in the NFL. Everyone's going to try to establish the run, especially in the first quarter, early on, no matter who you're playing. So our mindset is to stop the run early and often so we can rush the passer because all D linemen want to rush the passer, want to go after the quarterback, try to get the sacks. <laughs> There better be a half. I love hearing those guys laugh about that, trying to get half a sack from each other. But, you know, I think Sheldon may be more of a joke. I think Miles kind of gets mad because he thinks he deserves the whole sack. You only get the half if you finish them. No, that's definitely half. I'm going to call that one in if I don't get it. That's why I'm going to get my whole sack after the game from Sheldon. Because he didn't, he didn't really finish it. I, I had him. It's not really a friendly competition. He's selfish. He's selfish. I always trying to take half of somebody's sack. It doesn't have to be mine. It doesn't have to be anybody in particular. It's just if, if someone's getting a sack, he's like, I'm taking half of that. It's just that's the most, like, he can't get his own. Like, why? <laughs> what's up with that? NFL office. I'd like to report a, uh, a robbery. I robbed you? A robbery. I had a great rush. So did I. It's a, he fell on him. Hey. Oh. He fell on when he was going down. We, we don't reward that kind of selfish. That kind of activity right there. This face right here, selfish. Selfish. So they're going to go for a dug on fourth down and goal. Shotgun snap, fourth down and goal. It's a quarterback throw. He tries to get in. They didn't get there. Yeah! Yeah! Come on now. Coming off the bye, I really felt like we tightened up our defensive calls, our defensive packages. Uh, we addressed issues with different players, and I definitely feel like we are headed in the right direction after the bye and the adjustments we made. Yeah! Yes, sir! Yeah! You know, they just worked their tail off. Every, every day, come to practice, trying to get better. You know, they're just having a lot of fun this season. And they're getting rewarded with their hard work, obviously winning football games and, and starting to gel at the right time as we go into the stretch run. Half, 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 half. That is definitely a half, half. Zelda's had to still want from everybody, bro. <laughs> Those were my first Halves, I think I had with both of them. So uh, came in the same game, and uh, you know, just you know, small steps to to a bigger goal. I officially got 30 sacks. Officially. Officially. Me hitting 30 on the sacks, uh, just small steps. I wish it was more. Uh, you know, just grinding them out, man. That was uneasy to come by. 
Uh, kudos to the guys who get 15 plus a season. Uh, you know, uh, that's that's just it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, guys who play the run and uh, do everything else. You know, <laughs> get thrown under the bus a little bit while the guys who get sacks take the bows. <laughs> Come here, Doki. But uh, you know the league still recognizes guys' work ethic and uh, what they bring to their defense or to their team, other than just sack. So you know, I mean, hey, can't complain on my end either. I make plays too. He missed it. He missed it. Put some points up. Put some points up. Well, the Texans had a chance to tie the game up. They tried a 46-yard field goal by Kaimi Fairbairn, and he missed it wide left, and the Browns lead 3-0, and it's third down and long now for the Browns. He's got the snap. He's back. He's up in the pocket. He rolls right and throws, and Higgins caught it. They got his own. Oh! Oh! He made it. He made it. Come on, Chuck. Come on, Chuck. Nick's uh, whole leadership style is just, you know, don't do what I say, just, you know, just follow me. And don't worry about what I say, just look at what I do. So I'm in, and he's, uh, he's between him and Kareem, those guys are workhorses and have nothing but respect for those two. No, sir. That's Nick Chubb running that ball. Mayfield under center, takes the snap, gives it Chubb with a cutback, inside the 10, inside the 5, here he comes, touchdown, Nick Chubb! Welcome back, Nick. Yes! To see him break it late, uh, just the way he is able to still have that burst in the fourth quarter uh, is incredible. And then the decision he made there at the end is a uh, quintessential Nick Chubb. You tell him to do something, he's going to do it. So we told him, hey, no mas. That's the situation. So when you get the first go down, and he went all the way down to the one. Uh, so didn't see it playing out exactly like that. But again, that's Nick for you. One receiver, wide run. Tight ends off the line to the left. Chubb the running back. They pitch it to Chubb. Chubb running on the left side. Cuts the corner. Turns the corner. Drives up the field. And here he comes. 50, 40. He'll be arriving in the end zone. Right. Oh, he stepped out of bounds at the one. <laughs> Smart move. He stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. So as to just allow the Browns to run the rest of the game clock out. That's how you return, baby. That's how you return, baby. Yeah, two, four. That's, that's a hell of a player right there. That's a hell of a player right there. Victory. I wouldn't have been mad if he got the touchdown. Me neither. Mayfield takes a knee on second down, and all of the Browns teammates are going over to tap the orange helmet of the great Nick Chubb. Is it great having Nick Chubb back? You bet it is. That is a team player. No question. Ah! <laughs> Two folk. Two folk. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back, boy. You should have scored, though. Yeah, you you should have scored. Jake. Young man. You good? Yeah, you good? Keep hunting, brother. Thank you, brother. All right. Stay out. See you later. <laughs> oh, man, with the Houston Star smacking. And the Browns hang on and beat the Houston Texans today. 10 to 7, the final score. Uh, the mentality of the team, you know, one to know every week, you know, uh, kind of cliche, but uh, that's what it is, just a mindset. Um, can't really worry about the weeks after this week. Uh, we got Philly up, and, uh, and that's the only team we focused on. Uh, we're not worried about nothing else after them uh, until their week's up. Uh, this is the biggest game right now of the season for us. That's how we look at it. And until they say the game's canceled, I feel like we're always prepped and ready to get on out there and make plays. For us, we've just given where COVID rates are across the country and then specifically within our community in Northeast Ohio, like we've pivoted from a model of really being focused on minimizing close contacts of people in the building. There's been so many moments in this season uh, where we've given the guys one schedule and then guess what guys were going to a different schedule. Uh, and to their credit, they just haven't blinked. They've just dealt with it. 
I, they respond every single time with, with an attitude of whatever it takes, we're going to find a way. Yeah, the, the week after the Texans game was a challenging one. <laughs> There's no doubt uh, just because of, uh, you know, what COVID was doing, not only to the country, you know, but to, but to our building, you know, in particular and everything we can do to limit the spread we're going to do. So yes, we've spaced out the locker room. We've created additional locker rooms. You know, we have scouts working out of the stadium when they're usually in the office. We spaced out uh, meeting rooms and then we created new meeting rooms and then we just decided, decided we're gonna have virtual meetings. You know, we, we've made some sacrifices on the field, but I think just as importantly, our, our coaches and players have made a lot of sacrifices off the field uh, to try to make sure that this doesn't, you know, derail our season in any way. I know you guys saw the uh, news we put Miles on the COVID-19 list, so we'll be uh, without him this week. It's 2020. Expect the unexpected. So who's ever available to us, I promise you we'll be ready to roll on Sunday, and the guys know that. No, it was it was such a surprise because, you know, just knowing how careful I've, I've been, you know, the people around me, knowing that the people around me have gotten tested and they haven't tested positive. I've never been so so sore, so tired from from the flu. Usually, even when I'm I'm sick, then I feel like I can fight through it. This just felt like a, a different case altogether, and it was it hurt when I when I found out just because I knew I was you know we we had a good thing going not only on as a team, but as a defense and you know, individually, and we're just trying to. Trying to lock it down these these last four weeks and make sure that you no know, there's there's nothing that gets in the way of you know what we're trying to do this year. Losing My Miles is a is a great player, but at the same time, it's if it's uh, okay. Hey, look, here's the news. Here's what we'll do from a roster perspective. Here's what we need to do um, on the field to adjust to, to not having not having Miles there. But the train keeps moving, you know, regardless of who's on it. Today. It's the Philadelphia Eagles at 3-5-1 and one against the Cleveland Browns, who are 6-3, and three, trying to get to win number seven. Yeah, knew the Eagles game was going to be a challenge. Uh, they have a bunch of playmakers on offense. It's an extremely aggressive defense. We knew it was going to be a, a tough day uh, for all of us as we tried to move the ball in, in some more weather that was uh, unique to Northeast Ohio there. Told our players many times, our stadium is on Lake Erie, so we expect those type of elements. Uh, and, and we deal with them. We deal with them pretty matter-of-factly. You know what I'm Yo! Great day to be alive, baby. Be alive. Great day to be alive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. I know you bring it. I know you, bring it. I know you, bring it. I know you too, baby. I know you bring it. I know y'all bring it. Me personally, um, I've always known, you know, my potential and what I could do. I just always needed an opportunity. Being in this league as long as I've been in it, um, Getting the ball rolling around this time is so important. Someone give me a headbutt. What's up, baby? You know I'm here for it. You know I'm here for it. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Oh. Okay, then. Okay, then. You know, BJ's got some of the most experience in the group, so he's uh, one of those stabilizing forces in our room as a leadership, a guy that's been in the league and played a lot of plays um, before this year. BJ does a Terrific job communicating, right? He get he gets the calls in from Coach Woods. He's able to get everybody lined up. He can fix problems on the field. Uh, and then, you know, he's a good player. Hey, hey, we got one solid, one solid. Ready? Hey, let's be aggressive. On the left hip of Wentz in the shotgun. First and goal. Fulgham comes in motion, but they give the ball to Sanders. Sanders to the five, and that's where he's going to go down. Ball. And the ball came out. Loose ball. The Browns say they're fighting for it, and they have it. Big, big turnover for that Browns defense to get. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Takes the snap. Play action fake. He's back. He's going to get hit. It's up in the air. And it's picked off. Taki Taki's got it. Down the sideline. 25, 20, 15, 10. It's gets that word on the tip. And the pick by Taki Taki. Touchdown. Woo! Hell yeah. Big time. Big time! Ah, 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 ah! Ah! Yes, sir! Taki, Yaki, Taki! Oh, yeah, when, uh, you hit the QB. Oh, that was you hit the QB. Woo! Woo! Woo!
Well, against the Eagles, there were some runs in that first series where they they ran the ball and they were able to get the ball out inside the red zone, which was awesome because we're all about the ball, which is so cool to see, and stop that drive. And then our guys did a great job, both D-line, linebackers, DBs, the whole defense of adjusting, realizing what's happening, adjusting our alignments or within the calls and shutting down the run game. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the biggest key in that game because as we slowed down the run game then we were able to get after the quarterback um our man ov was ball in that game and it was cool to see and then of course sioni getting the ball was was amazing denzel making a play and sioni getting the ball in his corner that was great so happy for that young man i think the philadelphia eagles game for our defense if you watch the tape, the All-22, like you really see this defense start to gel. It was one play after the other, and they kept feeding off each other, and it was uh, three and out here, three and out there, a turnover, especially in Miles' absence, you know, it was special. Everyone showed up, man, and it was beautiful. Um, everyone, I felt like everyone fed off of each other's energy. Uh, that's a big thing uh, in our game. Everyone, you know, feeding off each other's energy. Seeing OV splash, I mean, that was big. OV's out there having a career day, baby. Here's Nick Chubb and from behind Rodney McLeod, the safety, no gain. Gave it to Chubb. Chubb got hit right away and knocked out. Big hit by Malik Jackson. What's up, boy? Let me get that off. Let me get that off. You know what you can do, hey? You break it down, but you know what you can do. They all over me. We struggled to run the ball early in that game, and coming out of halftime, the conditions wouldn't allow you to abandon the run, even if you wanted to. Uh, so, so we stuck with it, and, and we believe in our run attack. We believe in the offensive line, the tight ends, the, the receivers blocking on the perimeter. We believe in those guys. We felt like one of those was going to crease, and, and really in the second half, they started to. To jump run to the left and a stutter step and a cutback and a stiff bar 45. He's to the 50. He's to the 40. 35 30. He cuts back off the game. He's to the 20. He's to the 15. He's to the 10. He's to the 9. Oh, Nick Chubb is back. Hey, brother. Get his hey, get his man the ball. Hey, get him the ball. Action shit. You ain't done, you know. It ain't it, is it? We have great running backs. I just, I enjoy watching those guys do work, man. I'm sure you guys got a chance to hear it. Let's go! Tubbs. <laughs> Different. And they run angry, and, and that's outstanding, you know, because that's, that's what makes you great. When you run, and you're running absolutely around to, through, and beyond contact, it's that I will not be denied mindset. The more you can run the ball, the better we got to do on defense getting the ball back to the offense so we can go have some Gatorade and they can keep the ball. <laughs> so they're awesome. Here's Mayfield giving, jump running. He's through the middle and he leaps over a tackler over the 30 and they're going to put him down at the 27 yard line at the first down marker. Nick Chubb now the first running back all year to rush for 100 yards against this Eagles defense. Hell, I got 100. I got 100. And what is it? Congratulations, Nick Chubb. 3,000 yards rushing. Uh, right, we get clean edge like that. We got everything right. we want. You also stiff arm that guy in tomorrow. Run for a first down on this. When you watch the game, just watch me. Hey, nice job him. making him run the hunt. My time in Philadelphia, I, I am incredibly blessed and grateful to have spent a year under Howie. He formed a lot of my beliefs and philosophies really coming back here to Cleveland. Uh, I learned a lot from him strategically. Uh, and then I, what I probably appreciate the most is just how much visibility um, you know, he gave me in, into the job. And I felt like that's something that helped me transition and be prepared you know, in, in, in this role during my first season. You know, us winning the game is, I guess, it's a little bit like being your big brother, just because I have so much respect for, you know, for Howie. Um, it is just one regular season game, but it, you know, it, it's it's always nice when you, you go up and are able to compete against uh, an organization or a group that you have so much respect for. We in victory formation, takes a knee, and a big win for Kevin Stefanski today. His Browns end up winning. 
by a final score of 22 to 17. No one ever did me like that. You <laughs> step on my ass. Like this. Bad, bro. Working, What's bro. up, brother? That's the way you run your ass. Hey. Hey, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yes, sir. You keep too. On, keep on, yes, sir. Right? How about this, Doug? The Browns right. are seven and three. Oh, those are two good numbers together. Hey, that is a great team win. Hey, hey. someone's going to try and tell you that was ugly. That's beautiful. Oh. Hell is that? <laughs> hey, defense. Yeah. Defense, I got some numbers for you. Okay. Talk Safety. Oh, Interception for a touchdown. Oh, Three oh, takeaways. Oh, five sacks. Oh, they were two for 12 on third down. Oh, yeah. I still see a couple guys with those video stops. So start that video so I can see your smiling faces here on this beautiful Wednesday morning. All right, let's talk about the Jaguars. How do we win this game? As a team, we have to maintain a laser focus, okay? That is a must this week, an absolute must. That dude right there, all right? That's a bad dude, Mike Tyson. This is him in the ring before a match. What do you think's on this guy's mind right now? Okay, what's he thinking about? There, there's nothing else going on in his mind other than the guy standing across from him in a primal need to beat the out of that dude. Okay, that's what's in his eyes right now. That has to be us. We have to block everything out, apply all those lessons we've been talking about, and focus on what matters. And what matters, and we gotta go down there and play a Jacksonville football team, and we have to play our best to win. Okay, we're all ready to go. The Browns trying to get to 8-3 and three on the year with a tricky game against a hungry team that has nothing to lose. Jacksonville at 1-9. Feel good, play good. Set, hit. Hey, congratulations to Browns tight ends coach, Drew Petzing. He and his wife welcome their first child. So Callie Bronson, who is the chief of staff, she is coaching the tight ends today. That is an NFL first. So Drew had a baby coming. We thought we had a, a couple more weeks. We have contingency plans for everybody because it's 2020. And, and I just felt like the least amount of disruption to our overall operation would be bringing Callie over to help out with the tight ends. I trust her implicitly to do really any of these jobs but uh, she's a, an incredible utility player for this organization. I'm around these guys a lot. It was probably the most nonchalant conversation I've had in my entire career, where I walked up to them at practice and said, hey, I got you guys on Sunday. And they're like, okay, you know, and that was, that's what it was. Callie was ready, willing, and able, and she, uh, she stepped in there and we didn't miss a beat. That's credit to the kind of coach she is and uh, her willingness to always uh, be ready. So, I mean, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So, I mean, it was awesome to feel like, you know, we're not at a disadvantage with a certain coach coaching us. It just felt like business as usual. It took me back to why I got into this in the first place, you know? Uh, being down on the field, being a part of, of every facet of what's happening. And it was nice to, to get back to that and um, be focused on purely football and not what's the schedule tomorrow and how are we going to make this work and what protocols are we going to get hit with. It was about football um, the entire day for me. And, and I think that was really refreshing because it was a great reminder as to why I got into this whole thing in the first place is, is that feeling and that, that thrill. Hey, you guys, let's break it down. Let's break it down. Guys, break it down, guys, man. Hey, let's get it. Really misses you guys. Hey, let's do it for him, right? Let's do it for him. Let's go Straight big, up. all right? History, all right, win on three. One, two, three. Win. Don't worry about it. It's coming. It's coming. I gotta make. Hey, they gotta feel me today. They feel like a home game, don't they? Growing up as a little kid, you were out playing this with your friends getting in trouble by your parents because you're coming home too late. Ronnie has that youthful energy that he brings to the team. He just loves football. You know, he's out there flying around. If he's on the sideline between series, 
you know, he wants to throw the ball with, you know, with somebody. Uh, so that's really been a pleasure just to have him just because of his love for the game. And it's been infectious for our defense. Hey, just follow me, bro. Yes. Just follow me. I got y'all, boys. Just follow Play me. Together. Let's just go. Follow me. All day, man. DB's on three. One, two, three. DB. DB. It's 2020, you know, dealing with COVID, dealing with injuries. It's just part of a part of football. And just for me as a coach, you know, throughout my career, I just learned that those things are going to happen. Hey, watch the jet. Alert jet. Alert jet. Bump, bump. Bump, bump. Tight end is on a wing on the right side. Here's Glennon on a give. Robinson takes it 25 up to the 29-yard line, and he's brought down there. Malcolm Smith gets in there and makes the tackle. It's one of the Browns defenders down. Ronnie yep. Harrison, the former Jaguar, Doug. My collarbone. What do you got, Ronnie? My collarbone. For that to happen on the first play, it was hard to take. Him going back down there, you know, competing against his former team, I know that was important to him. Obviously disappointed, you know, for him. Um, just because he went down with the injury. But I feel like he's going to bounce back and, and be healthy from it, maybe a little bit quicker than people thought. Really disappointed for Ronnie to get hurt. I know he was fired up to play in that game. Offensively, our guys knew that we had some injuries on the defensive side, and, and they were excited about the challenge of going down there and scoring some points to help the team. And you saw some guys step up. I think Jarvis played his best game to date. He's made some amazing catches in traffic, made plays with the ball in his hands, uh, really just continues to, to bring a spark to our team when he's out there making those plays and, and the opportunities were there in that game. And in Jarvis fashion, he made them. Landry in the game, he goes off the line wide to the right. Bootleg out near side, he's got Landry there. He catches 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 33, and he gets knocked into the Jacksonville sideline by Joe Schober. Baker bootlegs out to the left after a play action fake. Shoots one down the middle, it's caught. What a catch by Landry at the 16 yard line. Josiah Scott on the coverage, a beautiful layout by Landry. Mayfield under center, motion, and Mayfield play action fake. Looks, pops, throws, Landry caught it! Touchdown! His, He's in the end zone! His first of the year. We had a great week of practice. We knew going into the game, we wanted to try to take advantage of, uh, in, in the air, and um, we got opportunities and we made plays. We all see that you know our offense begins in, in that backfield. Mayfield gives the ball, Hunt breaks it outside, 35-30, 25-20, 15-10 with a stiff arm, and he tumbles down to the seven-yard line. Jared Wilson knocks him down. It's first and goal. Here comes the one-two punch, Doug, Chubb and Hunt. Here comes Nick Chubb to the corner. Touchdown, he's in. He's at 100 yards, and they're in the end zone. And the Browns lead by eight, 27 19. We knew going into that Jaguars game that it was not going to be easy. They had a very good running attack, good offensive line. We found a way, you know, and that's, and that's what we always talk about as a staff. Coach Stefanski is find a way, and we did that down in Jacksonville. It wasn't the prettiest, but we found a way. Joe Woods has set his defense. Browns lead by 8, 27 19. Glennon shotgun, Robinson left hip. He gives it to Robinson off the right side. He runs it. They're pushing him towards the goal line, and they push him across the goal line for a touchdown. Jacksonville is within two. Yeah, and the Browns are making this tougher than it should have been. And now the biggest play of the afternoon for the Jaguars, a two-point conversion try. Glennon will have four receivers near side of the right. He takes the snap, the two-point conversion. He's up in the pocket. He's rolling, rolling, throwing, lobbing, end zone. It's picked off by Sendejo. The Browns shut him down on the two-point conversion with 2.14 left to go. That's what we always want to do, you know. We don't want to have to be in a position where you have to make a big play on a two-point play. Throughout a game, it really comes down to making a handful of plays that's going to make the difference. And um, so far this year, we've been able to do that, and it's been different guys that have been able to do it. So that's definitely encouraging. You have to have that mental toughness. You know, we try to prepare the guys each week. This is how we practice, putting them in different situations. So when that uh, situation does occur, they feel comfortable and feel confident that they can make the plays. Mayfield takes the snap, third down of a dozen, a screen pass to Chubb. He's at the 35, he's at the 40, he's at the 45, and he dives out near the 48-yard line. That's the yard to get at the 48. It looks like he's got the first down. In the end, the Browns win. Mayfield takes a knee, three in a row, and they are eight and three. The final score, 27 
25. What a fight this was all afternoon long. 210 yards final here. Chubb, uh, Nick had 19 rushes for 144 yards. Yeah. Where's the birthday boy? Eight catches, 143 yards and a touchdown. Hey, defense. We do those situations, right? We put you in that two minute compete sometimes. Two huge stops on their two point conversion. That's a great team win. It's not enough. I want more. All right. But I'm proud of you guys how you fought. We thought it was going to be a fight. It was a fight. Came out on top. Nice job. Hey, team on three. One, two, three. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. We talked so much uh, about work this week. We talked so much about focus last week, that laser focus. Think about that work. Think of, take yourself through all of that work. What that leads to is the ability tomorrow at noon to have great confidence in what you're about to do. What you're about to do is compete. So throughout this week, as we always do, we didn't talk about, hey, we're gonna just, we're just gonna show up and go win because we don't believe in that, all right? It's the old Sun Tzu, victorious warriors, right? They win first and then they go to war. While defeated warriors, they show up, then they seek to win. That's not what we do. We put in all that work. I have great confidence because of the work that you guys put in. I have great confidence because of the men on this call right now, the people that surround me when I stand on that sideline, okay, before kickoff, come look in my eyes, okay? You wonder why I'm confident? Because of the group around me. The group around me, the work that we put in. Okay, it's second to none. I believe in you guys, right? We have fun tomorrow. I cannot wait to watch you guys play. All right, we're all set to go from Nashville. It's the eight and three Titans and then the eight and three Cleveland Browns. And the great news, Miles Garrett is back, Doug. Yeah, that's the great news. I think, you know, when you look at both of these defenses, the Browns have the one guy that can be disruptive up front in the passing game. Heading into the Titans game, it's a big one. To stop them, you got to find a way to stop Derrick Henry. You got to make him one dimensional, as hard as that sounds. And then at the end of the day, we got to create some takeaways. We didn't do that last week, and we got to get back to that. And one way to get back to that is to get 95 back in the lineup. I mean, angle it and then go up, or just right at him? Right up. Right up. Go get the quarterback. Got it. I was uh, not there to make a, a cameo appearance. I was there to you know, be back to the top of the, the food chain. And that meant, you know, getting my, my body right, getting my conditioning together. I was definitely still recovering. You know, I had a camera on me. You could, you could hear my breathing in the, in the mic from, from uh, me being gassed, and especially that, that fourth quarter. But even when they were calling my number, I was like, man, it's going to be tough out here. But I just, you know, you just, sometimes you just, have to, you just have to make it happen. That's, that's the name of the game. You know, they don't remember you, know, you being tired. They don't remember you being sick or having COVID, they just remember how you did. You know, how, what did you produce and how did you produce? And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not the greatest game I'll, I'll have, but you know, it was it was enough this time. I got the mic up like y'all expect me to say something. Go Brownies. I expect greatness out of myself. No matter what happens, the awards or the goals that I have, I want to always achieve my goals. I want to exceed them. You no. Know, I could, I could go on a tear that not many have seen before. We back in the building. We back in the building. We back in the building. Let's go. It's time to turn it up. I love it. Browns on three. One, two, three. One, you got to be realistic, uh, knowing that uh, you know, I have four games left. Anything can happen, but it's just got to make it happen. I miss you. Glad to see you. Yeah, we're just about the work. That's that's what we do. Your work during the week is what determines how you play on Sunday. And the guys have bought into that. And we put so much of the focus there so that on Sunday, you can just go out there and compete. Go, go. Go back. Go back. Well, I felt really good about our game plan and we went into it and just executed. You know, obviously winning's fun. It covers up a lot of things, but to be able to go through the process and then, you know, reap the benefits on Sundays with these guys, that, that's the best part about it. As coaches, uh, we're trying to adapt what we do to our players' strengths. So I thought uh, in a bunch of areas, offense, defense, special teams, the guys did, did a great job of executing the game plan. 
you have momentum, you got to keep it. And uh, we ended up having uh, the best half we've had all year. Tannehill under center. Tight end stacked on the line on the right side. Third down and one. Play clock at two. Tannehill takes it. Play action bank. Back. Throws. Lobs. Caught. And knocked away. Nice play by B.J. Goodson as they brought in an offensive lineman. And they threw to him, Doug, and he dropped it. <laughs> Don't try to go for this Tennessee is short. They didn't get it, Doug. On a fourth and one. Hey, hey. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, sir. Well, the, the game plan is always established to run first with you know, Derek Henry, who's one of the best backs in the league. Uh, I think we have you know, two of the best backs in the league on our team. And so, you no, know, we get to see a good run game every time we go out there. You know, they prepared us well. Let's see who's the better back. Let's see who's the better back. Mayfield on first down, play action fake, back, throws, Chubb caught it, got a block, 35, 40, 45, 50. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. And off he went, Doug. You know, this whole team's been through a lot, and uh, we've also been, you know, working you know, year after year after year to, to improve this thing and you know, finally we're uh, producing. You know, this is just uh, you know, evidence of you know, what the, the time and effort and the work we put in and you know, we just got to keep it going. Play action fake, Lux, Lux, fires, end zone, caught, touchdown! It's Jarvis Landry! You know, these are the type of games at this time of the year where you know, it's going to feel like a playoff type of atmosphere and, you know, you're comparing teams, you're comparing um, records, you know, and who, who they have, who we have, and, you know, those two or three plays are going to dictate the game. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're on the plus side of those. It's going to work. When you're committed to this thing and you're emotionally attached to the results, like, it's special and you feel it. And so when you come to work every day with a group of guys that's all pulling in the same direction, you know, everybody's bought in and uh, you're starting to feel it on defense, you feel it on the team, you feel it amongst the whole building. He fumbled the ball, the Browns have it! Cole Joseph's got it! Sheldon Richardson got his right arm in there. Man, is he playing! That's what I'm talking about, boys! That's what I'm talking about! Let's go! The guys that we've brought in have been the right moves, you know, to, to bring in a winning mentality. And so when you have that consistency, and you have guys that buy in, um, that's, that's the biggest difference. It's a, it's a winning mentality in, in that mindset. Third down and goal. Mayfield's going to throw. He throws. Head zone. <laughs> Touchdown. Kendall Lamb. Yeah, Kendall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say, come on, Jim. Kendall Lamb. Honest Kendall Lamb. He's throwing down the right sideline. He's got people's jokes wide open. He's gone! 20, 10, 5, touchdown! See ya! See ya! 75 yards on one play! And I ain't never seen Bates throw like this. Yeah. He on another one today. I, I love it. You know, Baker is having you know, one of the best halves he's, he's ever had. And we love that. We love when they're, they're going up there and they're, they're punished and they oppose the defense. Ooh, Bates putting on display today, boy. Because you always want to perform better than than they are, and we know if we're we're stopping their offense and our offense is uh, going in there and producing, you now we just got to keep it going. What? Yes, sir. It's always great to have your best players on the field, and and Miles is certainly one of one of the best players that we we have on the team. So. It was good to get it, get him back uh, against a very explosive offense, and um, he certainly helped us win the game. What the hell I'm talking about? Give me some! Yeah. Give me some! Yeah. Yeah. Mayfield under center takes a knee, and that will do it. They ran away with it in the first half and hung on to it for dear life in the second half. And they win it. Final score, the Browns 41, Tennessee 35. The Browns are 9 and 3. Good luck to you guys the rest of the way. Nice seeing the playoffs. Yes, sir. Look, we're, we're excited about where we are. You know, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, but at the same time, we're not yet where we want to be, <laughs> you know, and, and we know that. But I think, I think we all feel like we're moving in the right direction. 
And this year as a whole has been extremely positive. And hopefully we'll have a chance to build on that. And I know I put that in the future tense. I mean, not only, you know, for the rest of this year that we can continue to build on that, but, you know, into next year and, and the years beyond. Hey, defense, how about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, three takeaways. Yeah. Yeah. Four forced fumbles, three sacks. They were two of 10 on third down. Okay, offense, 458 yards of offense. <laughs> Big 340 yards passing. Yes, sir. Hey. 118 on the ground. Okay, and then at the end there, the who loves football drill. Kareem Hunt loves football. Yeah! Yeah, he does! Yes, we are about that work, this group, okay? We're gonna see that team again. Hell of a game, we came out on top, but we are about the work, you feel me? Yes, sir. Hey, great team win. Team on three, one, two, three. Two. You backed up? I don't know why. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.